Today, we're diving into the mystique that is the Sigma INFJ personality type. Now, we all know, INFJs are like the unicorns of the Myers-Briggs world. Rare, magical, and prone to introspective daydreams. But, hold on to your personality tests because we're about to uncover the five toxic traits of Sigma INFJs that no one is talking about. The first toxic trait is what I call the emotional origami. Crafting feelings like a pro, imagine emotions are like colorful paper, and Sigma INFJs are the artists folding and shaping them in a very special way. Now, some folks might feel like this is a bit tricky because it seems like Sigma INFJs are too good at playing with emotions. You know when someone folds paper into cool shapes, like paper planes or boats. These are what are called origami, and it was originated by monks in Japan around the 6th century to decorate temples and shrines. Now that we got that quick history lesson out the way, let's get back to understanding why Sigma INFJs are origamis in their own right. Sigma INFJs do something similar, but with feelings. Here's the thing. To an outsider, it might look like they're bending emotions to fit a particular shape, almost like they're trying to control or influence how people feel. While they insist it's not about messing with emotions, some might interpret it differently. It could be seen as a bit manipulative because, from the outside, it seems like they're carefully crafting emotions to create a specific outcome. It's like creating a beautiful Japanese origami masterpiece. But some folks might worry that the feelings are being shaped in a way that suits the Sigma INFJ more than others. This is where the potential for misinterpretation comes in. It's crucial to emphasize that, Sigma INFJs are not attempting to mold emotions to benefit themselves at the expense of others. The analogy of creating a beautiful origami masterpiece is about the artistry and skill involved in understanding and expressing emotions, not about manipulating them for personal gain. Plus, it's just something they do naturally. There are no hidden agendas, or at least, not in a deceptive evil way. In reality, Sigma INFJs are likely seeking genuine connection and understanding through emotional origami rather than aiming to control the feelings of those around them. Their intention is to add depth and beauty to their interactions, not to influence emotions in a way that serves their personal interests. Number 2. Enjoying alone time, the cozy getaway. For Sigma INFJs, stepping into their cozy getaway involves setting the scene with a good book, lighting a Cuban, or just sitting with their thoughts, vibing out. Creating an atmosphere that feels like a luxurious spa day without the extras. To them, this alone time isn't about avoiding people or being antisocial. Rather, it's a personal retreat to recharge their energy in a tranquil and introspective space. However, from an external perspective, particularly from those who may not fully understand the Sigma INFJ mindset, this love for alone time might raise some concerns. Some people might interpret it as withdrawal or disinterest, and social connections, potentially being labeled narcissistic. But we all know how narcissists love attention and being the center of it, don't we? But it all boils down to one thing, and that is, people condemn what they don't understand. Moreover, to an outsider the cozy retreat might seem like a rejection of social engagement or an avoidance tactic, which could be misconstrued as unfriendly or exclusive behavior. The concern could be that by frequently seeking alone time, Sigma INFJs may inadvertently distance themselves from others, leading to a perception of aloofness or even selfishness. It's crucial to highlight that the intention behind the cozy getaway for Sigma INFJs is not to isolate themselves, but rather to find a serene space for self-reflection and renewal. Nevertheless, individuals who value constant social interaction and validation from others might find this behavior perplexing potentially interpreting it as a toxic trait because of the perceived distance it creates. The truth is, some Sigma INFJs struggle to convey this to others, though it is essential for them to communicate their need for alone time transparently, helping others understand that it's not a rejection but a crucial part of their self-care routine. This way, the potentially misunderstood trait can be seen for what it is, a method of recharging their internal batteries rather than a sign of detachment or exclusion. Number 3. Romantic Comedy Vibes Idealization and the Plot Twist Picture this. You're the lead character in your Sigma INFJ friend's romantic comedy. 
They have this magical ability to transform everyday moments into scenes straight out of the finest Hollywood scripts. It's like living in a romantic fairy tale where every interaction becomes a heartwarming plotline. Now, here's where things get interesting. When reality inevitably throws in a plot twist, Sigma INFJs don't respond with disappointment or frustration. Instead, they embrace it with quirky acceptance, adding a delightful twist of humor to life's unfolding story. While this rom-com realism adds a whimsical charm to the world of Sigma INFJs, some outsiders may view it differently. From an external perspective, this tendency to create romantic or optimistic narratives might be seen as unrealistic or overly idealistic. The concern here is that Sigma INFJs could set themselves and others up for potential disappointment when real-life situations don't align with the scripted scenarios they envision. To an outsider, it may appear that Sigma INFJs are wearing rose-colored glasses, navigating through relationships and experiences with a fictionalized lens. This perception could lead others to view this trait as potentially toxic because of the gap between the idealized expectations and the messiness of reality. However, it's crucial to understand that for Sigma INFJs, rom-com realism isn't about escaping reality but rather finding joy and beauty in the ordinary. While an outsider might see it as setting unrealistic expectations, Sigma INFJs view it as a way to infuse a touch of magic and humor into the mundane aspects of life. Number 4. Gourmet Feedback – The Gordon Ramsay Effect Sigma INFJs, with their gourmet feedback approach, channel their inner Gordon Ramsay to deliver intense criticism that's meant to be more like a gourmet dish of feedback. Their goal is to push others to reach their best selves, akin to a chef sculpting a masterpiece. It's important to emphasize that from the perspective of Sigma INFJs, this approach is about constructive improvement rather than tearing someone down. However, from an outsider's viewpoint, the intensity of this feedback might be challenging to digest. The Gordon Ramsay effect, when not fully understood, could be seen as overly critical or harsh. Some individuals might perceive it as a form of personal attack, rather than a sincere attempt to guide and mentor. The concern here is that the gourmet-style critique might overshadow the constructive intent, creating an environment where feedback feels more like a harsh judgment. Furthermore, the emphasis on pushing others to be their best selves might inadvertently create a sense of constant pressure. People receiving this type of feedback may feel as though they are under a perpetual spotlight, leading to feelings of inadequacy or anxiety about not meeting the high standards set by the Sigma INFJ. In the workplace or personal relationships, the gourmet feedback style might be seen as demanding or relentless, potentially hindering open communication. Individuals may become hesitant to share their ideas or progress, fearing they will face intense critique instead of constructive guidance. For Sigma INFJs employing the gourmet feedback style, it's crucial to be aware of how their approach may be perceived by others. Balancing the intensity with empathy and providing positive reinforcement alongside constructive criticism can create a more supportive environment for growth. Ultimately, the goal should be to sculpt masterpieces collaboratively fostering improvement without causing undue stress or anxiety in those on the receiving end of the feedback. Number 5. Superhero Syndrome – Difficulty in Accepting Help Lastly, Sigma INFJs often approach life with a superhero mentality, feeling a sense of responsibility to handle everything on their own. Offering help to a Sigma INFJ can be akin to trying to share an umbrella with someone who believes they control the weather, appreciative of the gesture but convinced they've got everything under control. While this superhero mindset can be admirable, others might view it as a potentially toxic trait for several reasons. First and foremost, it could create a dynamic where Sigma INFJs inadvertently isolate themselves from the support and collaboration of others. By consistently shouldering the burdens independently, they may inadvertently distance themselves from the collective efforts and insights of a team. Additionally, the reluctance to accept help might lead to burnout. Sigma INFJs may find themselves overwhelmed by the weight of responsibilities they've taken on, potentially sacrificing their well-being in the process. This difficulty in accepting assistance may stem from a fear of vulnerability as if asking for help would be an admission of weakness. 
The superhero complex might also impact interpersonal relationships. Friends, family, or colleagues who genuinely want to contribute may feel sidelined or undervalued when their assistance is consistently declined. This can create a perception of independence taken to an extreme, where collaboration is viewed as an inconvenience rather than an opportunity for shared success. Well, there you have it, the five toxic traits of the Sigma INFJ. Though it might be toxic to others, but this is simply how the Sigma INFJ operates and shouldn't be taken wrongly. They mean well. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. And remember, always stay true.